We also have a flat tire. What? We got into some trouble on the road. Boy, do we have a story for you. Welcome to the channel. I'm Paul. This is Liz. These are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And it's definitely challenging to live amazing if you're on the road with your RV and you have trouble. And that's exactly what happened to us. So to set the scene for you, here we are with our rig, our new rig, which is taller than our last rig, and it's 13 feet, five inches tall. And we're about ready to go under an awning that was how tall? 13 feet, four inches. <laughs> if you have not been on the road yet with your camper, since it's the beginning of season, or you have a brand new camper and you haven't been out yet, you may learn a few things from the mistakes we made, right? We were stationary for 76 days, and add to that that we had just picked up our new rig. I drove it a total of 10 miles from the from where we picked it up to where we ended up staying for that, that 76 day period. So what happened that we did not realize, we have been on the road for 18 months as full-time RVers. We did not realize that staying stationary for so long, we were used to traveling every two or three weeks, we got rusty. I mean, it felt like coming out of hibernation, like preparing to leave. So one of the mistakes we made, and there were several, we did some things right too, and we'll, we'll share our mistakes and what we did right. But one of the mistakes we made was we were so ready to get out. In fact, we were waiting for the campground to open in Oregon. I called the campground just to make sure, and uh, they said, we're open now. So we decided to leave the next day in less than 24 hours. And what we learned was that was too much stress on us to get everything ready. Even though we did it fine, we use a checklist, we did all the packing outside, we even hitched up the night before. It was just an added stress to switch gears so fast. We went from zero to 100 in, 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 a, in a heartbeat. I think we needed to ease ourselves back into travel mode instead of Bam, right? Bam, we're in travel mode. And honestly, the what happened is some stagnation because life really slowed down. We had not been traveling for so long. And, and I certainly I certainly felt that. I mean, I, I just felt, am I ever going to get out of here? I mean, are we ever going to travel again? Part of the reason why we were so anxious is if you've been following us, you know that my bike got stolen at that exact campground. It was it was just stressful and we just wanted to be out of there. Some of the things we did right were certainly to check as we were driving down the road, we stopped pretty soon. I think what, in the first 10 miles we stopped and yeah. we walked around the rig. Yeah. We always checked the tires, the hitch and the overall rig. We stopped at a truck stop and we just pulled off and drove it around in the, in the truck stop. So Paul had never backed up the rig and I had never driven the rig at all. If you have not driven your camper at all this season, definitely go somewhere and just kind of get the cobwebs out and, and do some maneuvers with it. So we're still in day one. There's something called the rule of three, 300 miles or three o'clock, whichever comes first. But that's when you stop driving. It was getting close to three o'clock and we needed fuel anyway. So Paul pulls into the gas station. We had just, by the way, we had just crossed the Golden Gate Bridge. The weather had been pretty good all day and we were ready to be done with our driving. It was a beautiful drive across the Golden Gate Bridge, which we now realize we drove across with a flat tire, <laughs> right? Yeah. And what do you say when we pull into the gas station? I say, how tall is that, a that uh, apron? That the awning. The awning, yeah. yeah. And I said, well, you know, I can't read it, but it looks like 16 feet. Maybe that's what it says. It looks way up there. Yeah. Forgetting that our new rig is like a foot taller than the old rig. So I said, well, it looked like 16 feet. Yeah. So he says, okay. All right. We drive in, luckily, and this is this is where just sheer luck comes in. The pump that we pulled up next to was the, the leading pump. Just the nose of the trailer went under the awning. And luckily, we didn't get to where the air conditioners were because they're up, of course, they're higher than the roof. And thank goodness, Paul knows how to back up really well because we were actually were in an urban area. We were in San Rafael, California, and Paul had to do this maneuvering. We also have a flat tire. What? Yes. So oh. if there's air here, we've got to. Do, we have a oh, we have a flat no. tire. And for a while, there's mud all around it. It's. Oh, 
So it's not bad enough that we just narrowly escaped tearing the top of the, the new rig off. And it would have been my fault. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've started really paying attention to that from that moment on. Yeah, I don't know how you know if, if it's not written on there. I don't know, short of getting out there with a tape measure, I don't know how you yeah. find out how tall it is. But, but if there's a question, obviously you don't go. Luckily, Paul, if you watch this channel, you know Paul has consistently saved the day. And <laughs> he saved the day again because he has triple A and they came out within five minutes. Now, here's the thing that I definitely want you to know. If you work at AAA and you ever come out, just know that Paul is going to help. You will definitely get some help from Paul because he has a background in the automotive industry. So he's going to be on it. And in fact, the AAA guy did nothing, he, right? Yeah. He, <laughs> he brought a jack out that would not have even picked up our rig. Yeah. Um, we, we realized we could use the, the uh, auto jacks on the rig. I had already loosened all of the lug nuts. I had my um, torque wrench out with the, with the socket on it and I had already broken all of the, all eight of the, the And lug got nuts the spare out. So he's under the rig getting dirty and in your favorite t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. And to get, so he did everything. Um, so if you do get a call from us and you work at AAA, be thankful because you really won't have to do much. When we stopped to get gas, it was just before three. By the time we dealt with all the stress of getting out of that gas station, which was not easy, we had an obstacle course that Paul had to go around. And by the time we got parked on this side road and waited for AAA, which did come super fast, but by the time we got all that done, it was after four o'clock because we wanted to go to a tire store and get it fixed and we got that done. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want to get back on the road and have no spare, but we were either gonna camp until we got the flat fixed, which might have been two days because it was a Saturday, Saturday late afternoon. And here's another thing, if you happen to work at a tire store and we show up you won't have to do much work either because Paul was being, you were doing everything. Yeah, I took the tire <laughs> off again. And, and the only thing the guy at the tire store did is he put it on the wheel lugs and, and started the lug nuts. And then I tightened it up the rest of the way. You know, they still charge me for a, for a full, as if they did all the work. Which right, kind but of we're me off. well, but we're still grateful for them because they fit us in and they were getting ready to close. We got there about forty five minutes before closing. And yeah. they left my valve cap off. So that's the other thing. If you work at any kind of automotive place, and we come along, pay attention to details. So that brings us to probably our biggest mistake. So here is our first day of travel. We have all this stress with the tire and the awning, but we actually put that stress on ourselves uh, because instead of just driving for one day and being done, we had three days of driving. Yeah, it was just shy of 800, 790 and change. We shouldn't have picked a park that, that far away from where we were. Uh, well, somebody really wanted to get out of California. I, yeah. You know, I'm a California native. I. I was born in Orange County and, and lived and worked there my entire life. It wasn't really until I started RV life that, that I left California. You know, there are some good things about California. I don't want to bash the state, but it's it's in my rearview mirror now, and I, and I have no interest in living there again other than, you know, short stays at RV parks. Three days of travel not only impacted us with so much stress, but also impacted our dog, Mango who just was like us. He was used to the stationary life and the first couple days he was started to go downhill. He stopped eating. Day three, he stopped drinking. So that, that wasn't good. And that was another lesson learned for us that, you know, if you're traveling with pets and they haven't been on the road for a while, kind of ease them into it, do some baby steps. And if you could see our background back here, you can see that we are in lush green, Oregon yes. and we're so happy to be here. We're glad that we got here in one piece. Really glad we didn't rip the top of the ring <laughs> because maybe maybe both of us wouldn't be sitting here right now. <laughs> yeah, that would have been ugly. When I was solo, I met this couple up in Washington. Long story short, they told me that they pulled into a gas station and ripped the top of their rig off. And, uh, oh my gosh. Yeah. So know the height of your rig before you get on the road. That's super important. Pay attention to those awnings. 
So while we were camped at Oceano, we met another couple, Drew and Anne. They have a YouTube channel called Runaway With Us RV. It's worth a look, and we're going to put a link down below. And if you are shopping for an RV and you're not sure what to get, if you should get a Class A, a fifth wheel, a travel trailer, we have a video for you that will help make your decision easier. If you watched last week's video, then you know that we are giving away a Kona French press by Idyllic Homes. And the winner is... Dad Dad. So if you are Dad Dad, please reach out to us and um, so we can get your information over to Idyllic Homes and they can send you your new French press. And we want to thank all of you for entering because honestly, all of you are winners because courtesy of Idyllic Homes, everyone is getting 15% off. There will be a link in the description. So thank you for playing and uh, we'll see you in the next video.